does this uh, arrest of Mullah Baradar continue? Does, there's, is there a flow? Do we continue to see um, the Pakistanis now going after Taliban commanders? Um, if that happens, that means that the sanctuary, the safe haven that the Taliban has enjoyed for the last nine years in Pakistan is coming to an end. And that's a huge change in the situation. For whatever reason, and you know, we, we, we will debate, I'm sure, endlessly the exact particulars of how this began to happen. I think that's less important than whether there's follow-on and follow-up. A footnote here. Uh, Baradar was arrested in Karachi. Uh, this follows reports about a month and a half ago that Mullah Omar had moved to Karachi as well. Why did they move to Karachi? Well, the reason, that the, the single simplest reason is the drones. The drones made operating in federally administered tribal areas and Northwest Frontier Province more hazardous. Um, and that's clear from the leadership of the Pakistan Taliban, which is now going through their second change in less than a year. Um, even Quetta, which was for a long time the stronghold of the Taliban, just the reports in the New York Times that the United States was considering using drones over Quetta had an impact. It became, in the minds of the Taliban leadership, too dangerous. Moving to Karachi became the preferred alternative. Now, Karachi is a very difficult place to operate uh, for the government and for us. It's a huge city uh, with a very large Pashtun population with a large history of being the terror capital of the world. Uh, but still, this is progress moving them out of the federally administered tribal areas and the border areas is a movement in the right direction. So that's one, whether we see continued follow-up movements against the Afghan Taliban in Pakistan. A second measure will be how Pakistan's own war against its Taliban proceeds. Um, Mike has given you an appreciation of the civilian casualties on the Afghan side. According to a Pakistani think tank, 25,000 Pakistanis were either killed or wounded in 2009 in terrorism-related violence. 5,000 of them alone in suicide bombings. Uh, that's a remarkable figure. This is the most serious internal instability Pakistan has seen in its 60-plus years of history. Uh, the country is exhibiting a wave of violence like nothing it has ever really seen before. One of the side effects of that is the Pakistani people who were for a long time in denial about the threat of jihadism in their own country have now recognized jihadism in their country is a threat to them. It's a threat to their children. It's a threat to their freedom. That doesn't mean they become pro-American. Far from it. But at least they're now turning on the jihadist or parts of the jihadist syndicate in their country. If that trend continues, that will be a very positive one. And finally, the, the, the third and you know, the $64 million question for us, do we begin to see more and more of the Al-Qaeda core in Pakistan cracking under the pressure that the United States and now Pakistan are putting on them? I think it's always premature to start writing the obituary of Al-Qaeda. Uh, many people have done it, only to be surprised at its age and resourcefulness. Uh, I think there's still an enormous amount of kick left in the Al-Qaeda core, but they are under pressure. And this is, after all, the objective of American <coughs> policy in Afghanistan and Pakistan to disrupt, dismantle, and eventually defeat Al-Qaeda.